Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Interventional News Expert Panel Discussion on the Use of Robotics in Interventional Oncology. My name is Raj Narayanan, and I'm joined today by Professor Terry DeBear and Professor Lauren Millo. And we're going to discuss our experience using the Epion robotic platform in interventional oncology. Having seen it in the early experimental phase, what was the moment when you realized, okay, this is going to make a significant impact when we introduce it into it? Did you have such an experience or? Well, something? I have two, and they were quite early. The first one was we were free, um, let's say, long time experience in IRs doing this uh, preclinical in animals, and we were all three of us very surprised of the accuracy. So this was the first moment we say, wow, this is the accuracy. And the second moment was when all of three of us, very experienced, look at the veterinarian, no experience in needle guidance, ultrasound, CT, never place a needle, and basically was doing as good as us. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, the haha moments. I, I have two as well, so I'm gonna took my. There, there was uh, one uh, at the at the beginning as well, something like our seventh case, and uh, and we, it was like a very difficult, you know, lesion at the dome and a pretty large lesion, very bizarre geometry, and we had to put like two needles side by side, very tricky and like very fast, very accurately placed, very quickly. So that was really the time I said, yeah, no, this works. And one very recent, actually, when we did some uh, IRE, and then I had some of my uh, very young colleagues that we just like did IRE, like nothing with multi-needles, just by themselves with a robot. I say, yeah, actually, this, this is pretty good. For, for me, it was mostly, I've seen the robot in trade shows and in medical conferences, but really did not engage uh, to the point that I would have liked to in the beginning. But then when I saw Professor DeBerr doing more cases and presenting on it, and he's somebody that I've looked up to from when I started in interventional oncology. So I had a pretty lengthy conversation with him about his experience. And once I knew what he was saying, that really prompted me to say, take a much deeper look at this. And we're fortunate to uh, be the first site in the U.S. to to bring Epi on uh, to our robotic uh, as a robotic platform. How do you think you can convince your colleagues to use the system? Have you two or very clear clinical benefit? Because you know many people are skeptical about uh, robotics because they can do better, of course. Uh, yes, I mean I'm guilty of that too. Um, early on, when you uh, you built your career on placing needles and doing CT guided or image guided ablations or biopsies, uh, you feel that you can always do it better. But the more I looked into it, it was not just the needle guidance that got me interested. That was one part. But in addition to that, you have the planning software, which allows you to do multi needle planning, which is something which I feel is important in my practice, where we do several cryos and IRE where you need multi-needle placements. And then also in addition to that, you have the volumetric assessment software. So all of these three things got me interested. And uh, so, and after I started using it, the accuracy uh, with the placement, the off-plane uh, needle placements, these are the ones that really convinced me that this is different and is changing how we're doing our ablation practice. I think and so there is those tumor we just see at the portal venous phase, you cannot track, you don't see them under ultrasound. This is, uh, I will call it, treating the invisible. A any specific population that you are targeting now or you feel more confident to target now with the robot versus before? I mean, with the experience we had with our overall 70 cases, I think it's, it's mostly the very deep, uh, very badly placed lesions, like the, the one which are like really challenging, like we are a big ultrasound guidance practice, so we are able like to really do uh, uh, very, very difficult, you know, dome lesions near to the heart as well, uh, and adding, you know, hydro dissection or balloons that may not be a great help in those type of lesions. That's really the kind of population before we will say, yeah, maybe not. Now, definitely we go for that, and even we, at the uh, MCC. And all of us are doing uh, teaching and education. And does it change the way you, you explain, you teach to your residents or, or even fellows? Absolutely. Um, I think the whole workflow has changed. Uh, so we're used to planning our trajectories and the guidance from the control panel of the CAT scan machine. 
and now that's moved into the room, into the workstation of the APN robotic system. So once we've done the initial scan of the patient, that's transferred to the workstation, and then now we are planning everything from inside the inside the uh, CAT scan suite. So that part has changed, and also when we do the planning manually, uh, we have to uh, when you do multi needle planning, you have to do one by one. With the robotic platform, you can click on the center of the lesion, mention, I mean, pick the number of probes that you're going to use, and it automatically gives you the plan for the multiple probes in a few seconds. So that's that's all different. So yes, the whole uh, planning and the teaching part is moved from outside, from the CT console to the inside where we use the uh, workstation. No. Yeah, so so for us, um, yeah, we, we change as well the way we think. Uh, I think it's the way we think of the entire volume of the acquisition and the lesion as well. Like, uh, again, we were very focused on placing the needle and teaching them how to see, especially when you do ultrasound. You like to, to be them to be able to see needle. Now it's really the entire volume of the CAT scan, the, the placement and the entire lesion as well. So this change, like, actually how we teach them, you know, to think of the ablation in terms of margin less so than you know, the lesion itself. And the other thing is actually I'm using the robot to actually uh, do a, some kind of a retro planning on ultrasound. So I show them the entire volume, but they can still follow. So they start to understand the relationship between the volumic acquisition and the ultrasound plane. So actually I'm able to teach them ultrasound via robotics, which is kind of interesting. Yeah, guys, you know, I have to confess that the planning was only in my head before. So I don't share my planning with anybody. So that's, that's a sharing device as well, because then you can place your needle and you can be sometimes challenged by your fellow. Why do you place it here or why do you do that? Before there was no challenge because you don't have to explain. I think that's a very important. And you can compare what you, you plan to what have been done. I think that, that's very good teaching uh, device as well. What advice would you give in terms of type of cases? You know, if you want to start your practice, what, what would you say is the ideal cases to start with? I think for me, the ideal case would be to start with something like uh, microwave ablation or radio frequency ablation, where it's a single probe case and um, where the tumor location is, is not very complicated to start with. But not that, it, that the robot cannot handle it, it's for your own uh, comfort level once you get more comfortable with it. Uh, and then move on to off plane cases. But uh, my suggestion would be to start with uh, microwave or RF ablation first. You, Thierry? Well, I will say the same. Easy case, single needle, liver, and, and the, the tough part of it, the, the difficult moment of it, is when you have to push the needle in the body of the patient because you are not used to go from skin to target. And, and being more confident, you can take your ultrasound and you can look at your probe going inside of the patient to the target because the first push from, from skin to target is we are not used to that. Uh, no, I, I completely agree. And I will also add that sometimes not to start with too superficial a lesion, because sometimes, you know, the, the interface with the liver can be a bit tricky. So it's good that at least there is some space between the surface and the lesion. I think that makes for a better like push into the, into, into the target. So what more like general advice would you give to someone uh, starting the practice? I think it's important to be uh, patient in the early stages because initially it could take a little bit more time. But as you ramp up and do more cases and get more comfortable with the technology and the workflow, you're going to see the improvements are going to be pretty dramatic and you're going to be getting through cases much faster. But it's important to stay the course and uh, understand the technology and the early stage is going to be a little bit more uh, time consuming, but it gets better. Yeah, I think you have to be patient and, and you have to be patient with people around you because this is not you only. I mean, you have your techs, you have your nurses, you have your anesthesiologist. You will take some space to the anesthesiologist. You ask your nurses and techs to do new things. So it, it takes a few cases. I mean, we say there is no learning curve, but, but of course there is a small learning curve. Perfect. And, and then I want to say, what, what key features like would you, you know, put forward like when you discuss with administration to say, yes, let's get there, you know, let's get the system, let's put it in. So for us, the uh, adding something such as the robotic platform was not just for the novelty. There was also a clinical need. Uh, we have a lengthy backup in our CAT scan machine to get patients to get their ablations. 
currently our wait time is anywhere from six to eight weeks. So we were actively looking for ways to reduce this time is so to give us an ability to do more cases in the same amount of time, which was one of the features we thought that the robotic platform could help. And uh, of course, now having used it for over three months, we can see that there is significant amount of time savings and also savings in the radiation uh, to the operator and the patient because we're not doing as many check scans as we used to do. And we're able to complete the procedures in a shorter period of time than what we did. So to me, um, a, uh, an important point to highlight to uh, your colleagues or your administration would be not just to look at it as a, a device that helps you to get from point A to point B, but something which is going to help you do more complex cases, uh, hopefully in a shorter period of time, and allow improve your workflow uh, through the room and thereby seeing uh, indirect benefits that way. Mm -hmm. As you know, there is no reimbursement, so you have to try to convince people to, to add cost on something um, different way. Uh, I think I get uh, more referral from outside because of the robotic, because we're in a world where everybody knows what you are doing and patients are, are just asking us to do treatment because of the robotic, so you can say it's more patients. Uh, I think there is something which is very important, and you, you touch base on that, is radiation. And I think you, you can easily convince your administrator that you can do any CT-guided ablation with no radiation to the physician. And, and Friday, before I went to CRC, I do a long ablation without any radiation. With robotics, you can go back you know, to events during your procedure. You can actually understand you know, what you did. So I know with the discussion I had from the with my administration, that was a big point. Because then you can really document you know, how you did the procedure, what you did each step. And, and, and for discussion, you know, uh, it's actually quite important. I find it quite uh, useful for that as well. Robotics, like what, what will it bring you know, to uh, I.O.? Like uh, where, where will we go with it? I'm old enough to think that uh, there will be robotic anyway. And, and I'm sure that the system will do better than our hands, even if it's tough to admit, Raj, it yep. will be the case. <laughs> Um, and this is the first point. And, and the second point, it's, it's probably a way uh, to enlarge uh, our practice for us, but this is maybe a way for patients to get more access to thermal ablation in general. And I'm sure that only radiologists will use robotic in the future. And I think this is a way uh, for better care to patients for enlarging the number of patients to really do those techniques. I agree. I think we've always seen evolution in how we've done procedures. Um, I guess when we trained, when we did arterial procedures, it was palpating the artery. Now, um, trainees can only do it with ultrasound and using a micropuncture needle. So techniques evolve, and this I see as the next uh, change that's happening and will continue to evolve in the space of uh, CAT scan and ultrasound guided procedures. And uh, so uh, the advantage would be that it's almost a equalizer the levels the playing field where we've seen our trainees place the needles just as fast and accurately as we do with the robotic device using it the accuracy has been great the reduction in the actual start to finish uh, of the ablation time that's been very good and also the reduction in the radiation the number of scans check scans that we do is also reduced because now we're able to push it from skin to target with just just one one moment Great, and I completely agree. I think it's really expanding the base of people who can do uh, ablation. We need more people doing those very complex ablation if we want it to be first line of care in uh, many patients for large lesion, for example. So thank you, everyone. Uh, in the name of uh, you know uh, myself, uh, Thierry and Raj, you know, thanks for being with us. As experienced user doing robotics, uh, I hope we showed you that the, we find that there is added value, you know, in the usage of robotics, and we hope. We'll find the same. Uh, so thanks again, everyone, for being here.